LON is an employee resource group who works to support and build and connect and inspire the Latino workforce in state government. One second, let me actually share my screen so you guys can see the presentation for today. Before I introduce our speaker, Indira, um, let's do some quick housekeeping items. Are you guys able to see my screen? Thumbs up? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome, because I don't see like the green. All right. So I'm sure everybody's aware of Zoom meetings now since we've all been working from home for about seven months. So um, these might be just friendly reminders. Please uh, put your mic on mute. Um, and if you can't put your camera on, I know it can be really difficult to like engage with people if there's like a black screen there. And we will be um, breaking people out into rooms a little later. So feel free to share what you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, this will be recorded and just so you're aware. So please feel free to share what it, what it is that you would like to share. All right, so a little bit about Indira. Indira Melgarejo is our Latino Leadership Network um, Health and Wellness Chair. She leads the health and wellness initiatives for the Latino Leadership Network. And she's also a bilingual immigrant with more than 13 years of experience as a university professor, head of the psychology department, and she was also a psychologist in Venezuela. Indy has a passion for working with underserved populations and has served as a volunteer at the nonprofit um, organization here in Olympia, Centro Integral Educativo Latino de Olympia, Cielo. <laughs> uh, Indira currently works for the Department of Enterprise Services in the Procurement Inclusion and Equity Program. So let's get started. Thank you, Marlene. And thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here today and seeing so friendly space. And I love that. Um, today, I'm so excited. And before we start talking about the, the topic itself, um, what I want us to know is pretty much how this uh, event is going to roll out today. So first, we're going to start with uh, Paul, I want to know how you guys are feeling. Um, then we're going to do a little bit of a, what is called a master class. That is, uh, you know, we're going to touch all those uh, subtopics that you wanted us to um, talk to you about, stress management during the pandemic, some teleworking hints, and depression versus isolation. Then, if we have time, we're going to go with those breakout rooms and some time for Q&A at the end. Um, as Marlene said, we're going to do this via, uh, we're going to record this meeting just to post it in our social media later. And you are welcome to ask questions at any time, okay? Even when we have a time for Q&A at the end, please use the chat um, feature and just questions at any time. You can also, um, you know, raise your hand. Gloria and Marlene are going to help me with that to let me know if there's a question there and I'm unable to read it. So this, the idea today is that we share, that we connect, okay? It has been some time since we have this time to see each other face to face, <laughs> at least, you know, in this platform. So please um, use the chat feature, okay? And so why are we here today, no? Um, today we're here because we're in, in a pandemic, no, COVID-19. We, um, as Marlene said, we've been working or teleworking at least um, as the word for the state. We've been teleworking since March. And the summer has ended. Fall is coming, the winter is coming, and it means things start changing, and maybe, or at least for me, 
Hi, Lindsay. I'm from Venezuela. The sun was part of my daily life. Here is <laughs> it's a precious thing. So it means that I need to do a lot of adjustment, right? And also another adjustment that we're doing is now our kids are at home and we that maybe don't know anything about how to um, teach kids. Now we have to also not only set up our workstation, but also set up kids workstation and set up kids school. Okay. And um, okay, so I'm glad to know that you, Marlene, can hear me. Maybe Diane, you have lost your audio. Okay. So we there is so many things that we need to adjust, and on top of that, we had the you know the fire recently and the smoke. The quality of the air were changed for some part of the week. We have elections coming. We have so many things, you know, that go on top of, on top of, on top of. And these are not, again, these are not regular time, okay? So let's go with how are we feeling today, okay? So this, um, I am feeling um, excited to be here. And I'm also a little bit nervous. This is my first uh, recorded presentation in English. So that also make me nervous. Now, please use the poll to um, to let us know how are you feeling. You can pick as many options as you would like. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a, uh, a minute to make sure that you read that. Okay. Okay, all the votes are coming. Going to allow a couple more so it comes. All right. Okay. okay. So we're going to, we're sharing the results and what I see, and I like this, the 50% the of the one of we feel hopeful, or esperanzados, esperanzadas, I like that. And we also have stress, stress or estresado, estresada, that would be the 42%. Worry, preocupado, yeah. Joyful and contento, and relaxed. Good, I love this. Thank you for taking the time to, to share in this uh, answer with us, okay? And why we why I'm asking you this question, okay? The importance of knowing how we are feeling, okay, is that it's going to allow us to be in tune with our emotions, okay? And it is necessary for us to connect to, how is it that, to, to take a moment during the during the day to do like a scan of yourself and that includes a scan of your body. How are you feeling? If you feel any tension, if you feel any discomfort, where do you feel? Sometimes I have met a lot of people, they said a lot of patients and then they said, I don't know how it feel. Or I'm fine, I'm good, I'm bad. And good and bad, those are not feelings. Right? And that's the appreciation of how we are. And a lot of time we are like, um, we have been trained to always say, how are you? Fine. And maybe inside, you know, something, a lot of things that are happening. It's like that image that there. We have like this mask and we said, fine. But inside, a lot of things are happening. And this is okay sometimes, you know, to. If a person asks you, how are you, Brian? That's okay. But it's important for you to recognize that sometimes I'm not okay, and that is okay too. Sometimes I'm angry, sometimes I'm depressed, sometimes I'm worried, and all of those things are okay. It's important to be aware of them. So then we can use 
strategies or techniques to cope with them, okay? So now let's talking about specifically, specifically about stress management. We're going to talk about stress management during a pandemic, okay? And because this is a um, different time, the regular time, okay? And so what I'm going to do first, and I'm going to give you guys a gift, okay? And this is the gift of belly breathing, okay? Maybe you have tried it before, but I want us to take a moment to, to do it. I want you to, uh, I want to show you how to do a deep, deep breathing, okay? And I'm going to demonstrate to you how to do it. And that is going to, you're going to allow me a moment for me to, to move my chair and I'm going to stand up and I'm just going to show you how uh, this technique is uh, properly used. And the idea with this is because when, when we are stressed out or when we are stressed, we, our system activate to mode of fighting or fight, fight and it's just a lot of cortisol is, um, is running out of our body and adrenaline is running out of our body. And when we do deep breathing, those allow us to, to suppress and to adjust those those uh, hormones and allow us to be a little more relaxed, okay? So if let's do this uh, exercise, allow me time to stand up. You're going to see me, you know, moving on. And probably my face is going to come up so crazy. So I'm okay with that. And so I'm going to set up because I want you to be able to see my uh, belly. <laughs> okay. And you're going to put one hand here. And I want to see you. That's what I ask you guys to have your cameras on. So one hand on your chest and one hand of your belly. And we're going to do this so you can feel like when you're doing the deep breathing, this needs to stay down, okay? Your chest is not going to move. What is going to move is your belly, okay? So we're going to take a deep breath and you're going to push your belly out and then you're going to breathe out. And we're going to use warm and soft when you breathe in. In your mind, soft. And belly. As you breathe out. We're going to do it two more times. Soft. As you breathe in. And belly. As you breathe out. One more time. Soft. And belly. Okay. And I want to see some, please, thumbs up and thumbs down. And with your reaction. This is something that it was easy for you guys to do, but it was kind of like, haha, and it is losing her mind. So please, if you can give me a uh, thumbs up or down, you can use the reactions box button to let me know if you were okay with this exercise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, please feel free to try this at your own time. You can see a lot of videos in YouTube. Uh, and if you have any inconvenience to it, doing it, you feel free to reach out, okay? Perfect. Now, we don't just do uh, breathing, but this is a really great technique and it's, uh, as I say, it's a little, like a gift for us too. The only thing, another tip that we can do during this time that is important to connect with is being thankful. During this time of so, many things that are happening and so many things that we can uh, 
um, label as bad or triggering sign. Being thankful is uh, is necessary. Being thankful for practice, thankful for anything, right? Like uh, I can say, oh, thank you for being here with you guys. Thankful for having a roof where to live, a home. I'm thankful for having food in my house, or I'm thankful for the rain, okay? And you don't have to say thankful to God if you don't want or if you don't believe in God. But it's important to practice and connect at least, you know, one time a day with something that you feel thankful for. That is going to allow you to have a perspective, uh, an optimistic perspective on life. Another thing that is important for us to do is laugh, smile. And that laugh and smile, it doesn't have to be for it because something happened to you that makes you laugh, okay? Is, um, there is research that show us how, who, how we, um, when just this act of smiling, even when it sounds like fake, you are going to send, uh, your mind doesn't distinguish between um, reality and, and things that you made up, okay? So when you smile, okay, if you want, you wanna practice right now, you can smile. Even when you don't feel like you wanna smile, you're, you're going to send message to your, to, to your brain, to your mind, saying that things are all right, okay? You can also watch movies that make you smile. You can look up memes. You can, you know, watch funny videos. Also, that will also help you, okay? And then celebrate your success is something important to do too. Small success. Oh my God, I didn't burn my, my meal today. Yay! Okay? And I, a lot of time I burn my food. So today I didn't do it. So woohoo! And that, those little things allows you to also connect with happy memories and, and feeling, um, feeling more optimistic about life. Okay? Um, a couple more things that we need to learn, especially during these times, is to live with boredom, we feel bored, okay? You can feel bored and that is okay. So learn to live with that sensation of also uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I really don't know what's going to happen in November. We don't know. I don't know when the vaccine is going to be ready. I don't know when I'm going to be back at work. I don't know and it's okay. So it's important to learn to live with no knowing, okay? And then please schedule time to have fun, schedule, schedule time, schedule time. Like, you know, you can take your agenda and write down things here and put fun time, family time, couples time, and personal time, which are completely different. Family time doesn't come for with your being with your spouse. And it doesn't count for personal time. So you need your personal time to do things that make you yourself happy. Okay? Like you or or relax. It could be taking a bath. Okay? So schedule those time. Make sure that you um, prioritize having fun, being relaxed. It's important to prioritize. Sometimes in our busy schedule, it's like, oh, priority is work, priority is kid, priority is the house and food. But we need to think about us too, okay? And the connection with those in our family, okay? I want to know uh, if you guys are still there. Are you guys still connected? Can you give me, you know? Um, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Marlene said that she's been meditating lately. lately. That's awesome. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Kristen Stan. Um, I'm sorry if I got your business name. Really, really apologize for that. Okay, so now let's move on to teleworking. Pavita, thank you. Yes. And how are we going to do? And um, uh, Marlene, can you please put the next slide? 
we're going to talk about what are we going to do during uh, teleworking and how our, um, okay, thank you. Yeah, Gonzalez said that, she, uh, that is, she has so much time right now, personal time because I don't see anyone due to the virus yet. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this and having that personal time, I'm, I hope that you are enjoying it too. Okay, to enjoy that personal time that sometimes or before, you know, seeing so many people or uh, working and going out to work and all of those things, like minimize that time. And now we have like this extra time that we can adjust to use it, make it more uh, joyful, okay, or relax, or also to reflect and connect with, us, with ourselves, okay. So, when now that we're teleworking, and again. I'm going to say now that we are teleworking, assuming that the majority of us work for the day or work in, um, they are working from home, okay? The first thing that we need to talk about is establish a routine. Working from home, sometimes we might think like, okay, well, I can, you know, as long as I do all my projects and as long as I keep my emails on time and respond to everybody, I'm okay. Yeah, no. Because then we tend to that line between work and home and house and kids and husband and co-workers get all blurry. So it's important to establish a routine. It's important to decide when am I going to start, when am I going to stop and stop, okay? When am I going to take breaks? And now that we have our kids and, but it's not just having them, it's just having them starting and setting up their Zooms or team meetings or whatever is the, the platform they're using, or sometimes they're using more than one, also schedule those times. By like this morning, because I didn't have a 7.30 meeting, I was like, hey, okay. I, I schedule my time like every day. I live every day at the time. That's another thing that we need to do, work every day, treat every day different, okay? Because it's, it could be different according to the, all the meetings that you have. But also, when you just work one day at a time, it's going to allow you to feel also more relaxed. Because if let's say that I make a routine and I work from seven to this and to do this, la 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 la, and something happened, oh my God, I can stress just because my ah, just throw me is my schedule, or you you're you're messing my schedule. So instead of doing that, it's important to do it one day at a time, and then when I start have my schedule with all my meetings, I feel like, okay, now I'm going to set up my kids. I'm going to review what are the homework that he needs to do and what is the, the page that he needs to do for, for school, okay? So boundaries, all of this, all of this that I'm talking about, it's connect with boundaries. It's important for us to have boundaries, to set, okay, I'm working or mom is working or mom is in a meeting and when you see the, the door closed, or when you see this light on, or when you see this, so and so, okay, means that mama is not available, okay? Unless, as I said to my son, if the house is on fire, or you are dying, or that is dying. So, and I said, repeat that back to me, okay, if the house is on fire, uh, but he said it, and it works, okay? He needs to know when he can reach to me, right? He needs to know that, I'm um, unavailable for, look at this, look at this book that I got. No, no, this is not time to show me the book. I can see the book later, okay? But right now when I'm in a meeting, you're going to be in silence and you can work, you can play in the in certain, these other areas of the house, okay? So boundaries. Um, it's also important um, to, <laughs> I love that. You just told your kids how to know before they enter the room. Just today. Good, Marie. That's setting boundaries. That letting them know. Because kids don't know. And it's our job to let them know what is it that they, um, it's okay to do. Okay? But it's our responsibility. Okay? So establish connection with your co-workers during this time. Of, um, Kristen was saying that it has more personal time. So it's important to to schedule times for tea, coffee, chat, just 
30 minutes to connect with your coworkers instead of just business, 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 right? And please make sure to have clear expectations. Um, ask your boss, ask your coworker, what is it that you want? When do you need it done? And how exactly do you want it, okay? With the, the idea with this is that um, there are so many nuances that comes with working from office, right? That you can like in, intuitive and you can see a big board and there is more information. But here we might feel a little bit disconnected. So it's, in, it's important to have everything like more structure and more boundaries, okay? And again, when you finish your work, disconnect. And this, this might take a little time. And it also, I would say, compare, uh, make an association with my, okay, I, I, I end at five. So at five, it means that I'm going to stop working, but also I'm going to do something else to, so my brain, my, my mind understand that I'm out of work and I stop thinking about work. It could be go for a walk, it could be deep breathing, it could be watching a fun video, it could be jumping jacks, it could be whatever help you to disconnect from work and not go back at A and finish it. Ah, oh, that thing that happened today, right? It's important for you to do that break. And then if you're a manager, think twice before scheduling a meeting, okay? Think twice before scheduling a meeting. Sometimes you can just a phone call, it should be could be enough. And ask, ask your um, your coworkers, ask your uh, the, the person that you supervise, how are they doing? What are the challenges? Okay, what is his experience compared to when you were at the office? Ask them, how's your work uh, set up? Sometimes everybody is in the same room. It could be more. Um, it will lead more to stress is, you know, if I have my husband right next to me in a meeting, uh, my son in his meeting at the same time, and that is not going to allow me to connect fully with my work, okay? And it's important for your boss to know, so for you as a manager to know this information. Ask them uh, how easy it is for you to contribute during a meeting. Do one-on-one, -on -one, relate and connect. Um, as a manager, I believe it's very important to be attuned with how is your team performing, okay? And yes, if it's stressful for everybody, for managers, I believe it's way more stressful because you know you need to think about other people as well and make sure that they feel well at work and that they are engaged with you, okay? These times are times when people are we are, we are rethinking or I am rethinking about my work. I'm rethinking about my life in general. So it's important to, to connect and to know where are we in this. Going to pause in a second. Do you guys have any question? Um, any thought that you would like to say? Mm -hmm. And are you guys still there? We're still here. Hey, Indy, um, this is Flora. And I think more than a question, I just have a comment. Um, yeah. I have to praise my managers just because they have provided so much flexibility during this time and the understanding that, that we have other responsibilities right now. In my case, it's kids and, and their school and um, having open conversations about like, do you need to change your schedule? Like, do you need to have a longer lunch? Do you need like break up your time? And, and I just wanna praise my management for providing that flexibility and just continue to emphasize uh, the importance of managers to connect with their employees to make sure they're doing okay. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how to experience with another, in others, um, state agencies. In, my, in DES, it's also the same. They are very flexible and we are able to adjust as our schedule. And that's, it, that's important. That is very important. Not all the agencies are the same. So that's what is important, or at least 
my my intention today is to say it okay and i'll just wait for things to happen also say it okay so we are going to move on to the next subject which is depression and um Trevino was saying that he has now so much time because he doesn't see anybody. Okay, and I'm um, I'm thankful for your comment and and the reason why we need to talk about isolation is to understand that sometimes we can be um, we can to to limit our exposure with the virus. We then we need to practice social distancing, right? But that is different to feel isolated, okay? That's this completely different. So that's what is important to differentiate between when um, is social distancing does that mean that no connection, okay? And, and let's, I'm going to stop for a second and I wanna talk about sadness first, okay? Sadness is normal. And what do I mean by sadness is normal? Sometimes you might feel sad. Right? Um, I can feel sad. Oh my God. Like, I can feel sad because I watch a movie and at the end of the movie, something's popping on me. Right? <laughs> and, and that's normal, right? That's a normal reaction to what is happening in the movie. Uh, sometimes I might feel sad because, uh, because I lost something or because I lost someone. Okay? So it's normal to feel sad. Sad is uh, it's an emotion and it's a normal emotion that is important to feel, okay? And when it becomes a problem, when this sadness is not just uh, for something that is happening, always taking longer, okay? For example, um, there was a time that I changed my birth control and I, like one week into this, I was feeling sad for no reason. And I remember I was in the car and I wanted to cry. And I wanted to cry. I was so sad. It was this feeling, like I'm feeling all over my body. And I called my husband and I said, hey babe, I just wanted to let you know that I feel sad. And I don't know why. But I just want you to know. I just I needed to say it out loud. Like, hey, am I going crazy or what? Right? Like, is there something that is happening that I'm not aware? That I need to be stopped for. And he was like, okay. And then we, I started like looking what could happen. Okay, it was a beer control. Then then I noticed like when I start taking the beer control a week after, this is one of the symptoms or side effects. And I stopped taking it and pff, that sadness went away. So it was an effect of the hormone. Okay. Um, and that that's important so that's what I, I said at the beginning being attuned with our emotions to know to be able to recognize when it could be like an hormonal thing um, or something else is happening that i'm not able to connect with okay and i'm going to take that term from Marie cruz thank you Marie cruz for sharing that okay i like to use the, the term physical distancing instead of social distancing because we can still connect in other virtual well ways and remain social. I love it, thank you. Thank you, Marie Cruz, I'm going to take that, okay? Yes, so we can still connect, we can still call our friends, video chat, and remain, uh, and remain social, okay? So I would say sadness then, that sadness is normal, it's important to be aware of it, but the problem is when this sadness disconnects us, so, you know, taking what uh, 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 Mary Cruz is saying, you know, when this connects us from the other, when we start spending, even, you know, we don't call our family or friends, we, uh, in the meetings, maybe we are all the time quiet and never participate in works meeting or just business, business report, and that's it or when this also in as you know um depression is when we start this sadness is prevail like 
it takes all over us, every aspect of our life. And then we start having trouble sleeping, either because we sleep more or we, because we sleep less. And also we start eating more or eating less. And then we also start like the thing that we used to enjoy, we cannot enjoy anymore. That is when we're talking about depression. And depression is not normal. Okay? Depression is a dis um, imbalance in our um, the chemicals in our in our brain that cause us to all of these different symptoms. And that is the moment when you need to ask for help. Okay. Uh, this is the month of uh, suicidal awareness. Depression also leads to suicidal thoughts. When you start thinking about, maybe this life is better without me, you know, the world is better without me, or my family is better without me, what will happen if I'm not here anymore? We are talking about suicidal thoughts, or maybe suicidal attempts. We need to say this is this is a serious thing and we need to get help okay so marlene can you please uh change the us uh, to the thank you because we now we're going to talk about how we're going to handle depression and the first thing is ask for help okay you can ask for help to whoever you feel comfortable with and there are also um text you can text um is that suicidal line and you can text HEAL to 741741. There is a suicide, suicide late lifeline. And we're going to put those numbers uh, towards the end. What I want to say here is that it is important to ask for help and get somebody to be with you, okay? When I'm saying this is because depression isn't something to take lightly and being like, Oh well, it's going to you know, it's going to fail, or I can handle myself. I'm a strong person, and I can be this. No. Okay. Understand that this is um, it's a chemical chemical imbalance, and probably you will need medication. You will need psychotherapy as well. Okay. And what I'm going to talk today too of things that we could do to avoid and to handle it. These are not medical advice. And it's important to just, if something can stay with you from today is, is a serious thing, okay? And one way to handle um, depression is having a routine. Because I've been talking about routines, right, since the beginning. Because having a routine allows us to feel control. In this moment where everything is, you know, chaos around us, Having a routine allows us some sense, sense of control, okay? So keep a routine, keep a diary. It could be uh, 10, it could be, if you are good writing, just write down your thoughts. The idea is to take those thoughts out of you and put it out. But if you, there, maybe you're a musician, just grab your instrument, and I pointed out to my cuatro back there, and just, you know, singing or playing, that also helps. The idea is that you put it out those thoughts in a diary or um, drawing, for example. Connect, connect with the um, with your with your friends. Connect with your family. Connect with another human being. And it's important to force yourself to go out. It's important also to do exercise, uh, running. It's important for you to, to disconnect from that isolation and force you, okay? So if you, see the, if you see the sun or if you like the rain and you feel it, go out and get out of your bed and go out. That is going to help you. Connect with the nature is, is like an instant recharge your energy, okay? And also understand that it's going to take a small steps you're going to do it this, you know, one at a time, one step at a time, and you can take one step up, uh, and one step forward, and then two step down. That's how it works, okay? 
And um, as Julia is saying, there are trees help with your anxiety, and it's true. There was a challenge about hugging a tree. Go out and try it when you feel comfortable. Go out and hug a tree and feel that energy, that connection with the outdoor is just amazing. And one of us that live in this, you know, Washington, this uh, state is, is amazing for doing outdoor activities. And keep your sleep routine, walk, dance, run, go out for a walk, take out your headset for a moment and connect with those birds, with the sound of the rain, with the sound of your steps in the ground, connect with that, okay? And, um, and dance, dance, and us, some of us are um, um, Latino. We are more, or at least I am, the, the, not just Latino, but also Caribbean. For me, the music is healing. And there are right now um, um, a study that is showing us the power of the music and how the music the, the, is healing. The music helps us to heal, okay? So I'm going to invite you so we'll do another exercise and Flora is going to help us with that. Okay. Um, so we are going to probably start the recording for a moment. Hello again. So for those of you that could not attend the live event, we want to share the list of resources that we present at the live event last week. So here are some um, information that you can find online. One is uh, Bienestar Washington, which is a um, research in Spanish with information. And, and this was created by the Department of Health. Okay. I also mentioned during my presentation, the Suicide Lifeline. And there you have the phone number that you can call if you have suicidal thoughts. Also, you can text HEAL, and that is the, uh, the number that you will need to text if you need help. There are other event, uh, other links, sorry, the other website listed here that you can take a look. If you sign up for our um, event, right event, you will receive a copy of these EPR links, and you will also receive other resources, okay? One more thing before I say thank you. Um, there are some stuff that you sometimes, when we were talking about isolation and depression, sometimes you might feel, what is the barrier between feeling like a neurotypical person or when he said that this is just me starting to to isolate myself from the others. Um, and I'm putting this out because a person during the live event asked us a question and we didn't have their contact information to reach out to them directly. And so when you feel the, the issue with isolation is when you start to disconnect from the other person, from others in general, and also, it's, um, you also feel sad, you feel disconnected, and you, you, you feel like um, a sadness inside you. And, but when you are more like a reserved per person, or maybe a shy person, or just you are very selective with your friends, and you decide, well, I feel connected and I feel engaged, and I'm just hanging out with this, this group of friends, that is very neurotypical with a neurotypical, I mean like regular, okay, or normal or common, okay? In now, especially in our culture, we're trying to celebrate a lot of, of people that are extroverts and that doesn't, that doesn't mean that is like the rule to measure, okay? Neuro, measure what is normal or neurotypical, okay? So you, just have preference to, to hang out. As long as you feel connected, as long as you and the others also 
uh, since to have that perception, you maybe you just reserve maybe time. That's okay. Okay, and then so for for closing out, we I wanted to invite you to connect with the Latino Leadership Network. And also, if you would like to receive a copy of this uh, resource or the hyperlinks for this resource and other resources that we're going to share with you, please subscribe to our newsletter. And um, also, if you would like to be part of uh, LLN, we invite you to become part of LLN. There are many positions available at the board. But there is also opportunities for you to work with us in a project. You just wanted to connect, inspire the Latino workforce. If you want to take that step and become a leader, connect with us. And there you find in, the, in this slide, you will find this is our web, um, email address, sorry, ln at ofm.wada.gov. And you can just reach out to us and we will like get connected. So thank you so much for your time. I hope it has been as good for you and helpful for you and it has been for me to be with you. Thank you and have a great time.